In today's video, is rapid fat loss or sustained fat loss better for long-term results? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today I got my man Steven Bogrand here and guess what that means? We need some intro music, some wah 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 wah, science with Steve. So my man Steve here has a master's degree in exercise science from the prestigious University of South Florida and today we're going to talk about MASS, the Monthly Application of Strength Sport. Now the exciting thing about MASS is that it takes all the research that's kind of important to us and what we do and they dumb it down for us so we can understand it and they actually take what's relevant, not relevant, give their kind of thoughts about what we should look at. And this one was really cool because something that we deal with as coaches at Pro Physique is people who have tried to lose weight, regain the weight, and so we want to talk about the most sustainable approach. So let's talk about this particular article in mass, which I'll put on the screen here for you guys to see. Cool. And uh, we're gonna give our thoughts. Absolutely, so what we're looking at here is a meta-analysis that they have done on some studies that compared very fast rates of weight loss to slower, more controlled rates of weight loss. And so in a meta-analysis, you're going to have a search criterion. And essentially, so there's certain things that fit the bill and then a whole lot that don't. Um, so in this study, you had different changes in length of dieting phases, right? You had some as low as five weeks. I think some as were up to like 24 weeks in terms of length of diet, uh, differences in calorie intakes, difference in protein intakes. Um, and so just a lot of differences across the board. And so it's taking a bunch of different studies that have maybe done things similarly or within a certain range or scope, um, and then kind of looking at what all of those are saying as kind of a, an agreement across the board in that specific approach. Yeah, so a meta-analysis in, in terms of research, and this has been explained to me by several people, is kind of a gold standard because what it does is it takes multiple studies right. and you can look into any one study and kind of get some statistics that kind of fit your what you're trying to say, but a meta-analysis, right. it's going to be multiple studies, so it's going to be much harder to cherry pick data. 100%. So uh, what did we find? And so, yeah, what we're seeing is differences in terms of fast weight loss versus low weight loss, obviously. And so there are some things that we want to consider. Um, so first and foremost being the population. This was 75% female population. So for guys, this may or may not be as applicable to you. That kind of sounds accurate though. I would say that women as a, as a group probably are more concerned about weight loss than men. I think that I would say American society um, absolutely is part of that as well. But 100%, so yes, there's that. There's the other option uh, that Criterion had um, all of our subjects being either overweight or obese by BMI standards. Okay. Again, may or may not be really good because I'm overweight by BMI standards. As am I. Yes. So again, just one more thing to consider is our population. Who are these people? And what do they look like? Um, so there was no stabilization of weight period before the diet, which means they could have been gaining weight before the diet, they sure. could have been losing weight, they could have been maintaining. We are not quite sure. Um, and with a lot of the other studies, what we're seeing is, is they were doing their macronutrient profiles based on a percentage of total calories. So if your total calories are say 1600, so the same percentage of 1600 is going to be higher protein than the same percentage at 1100 or gotcha. 1000. So lower protein intake. Uh, some of the other ones went as low as about 50 grams of carbs. So some of the stuff that we're seeing here it could be loss of glycogen depending on what type of BMI um, you know, or uh, body composition analytics they were doing in terms of measurement tests um, could have been glycogen and water weight because not all of them separate that as and well. And so if you're not familiar with glycogen and water weight, that basically shows up in a body comp test as lean body mass. Yes. So that can have an effect on what's showing up. So what Steven's trying to do here is just explain to you that you're not going to get a black and white answer today because we Rough. didn't get a black and white result. So we're going to tell you what the research said, then we're going to talk about kind of what our recommendations would be. Absolutely. So what we're looking at is obviously the people who dieted faster lost more weight. Awesome. It's a good thing. However, they didn't always lose more body fat. Uh, the people who dieted slower tended to have lost more body fat by about one kilogram or 2.204 pounds. Really getting exact here. Yeah. <laughs> and they kept more lean body mass. So they actually lost more fat 
which is really, I know we look at the scale and we see a number and we're like, I don't like that number, I want it lower. But it's not necessarily about the number, it's about how much body fat is associated with that. Well, number. it can actually be dangerous to focus only on that number because yep. there is actually research that shows that if you lose too much lean body mass, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up for a worse rebound where you'll gain more body fat. Absolutely, and that's one of the other findings that we see in this study is that those who dieted faster um, had a bigger impact on their resting metabolic rate or the calories that they burn if they just sit in bed doing nothing all day long. Uh, those who dieted slower seemed to have less of an impact, negatively speaking, on their resting metabolic rate. So they were in a better spot to maintain weight loss afterwards um, or to go back into a more normal diet with a little bit higher of calories. Yeah, so ultimately what this comes down to is education. Because I will never say that you shouldn't try to lose weight rapidly. Uh, I have said that in the past, but I now understand that when someone is really overweight and really yes. obese, there can be some cases where it might be better for your health to eat a very low calorie diet and try to lose weight rapidly. Yep. However, understanding the implications of that, and I would say including some type of resistance training and a proper amount of protein mm -hmm. to ensure that you're not losing bone density, yep. lean body mass, is really gonna allow you to sustain this approach for a longer time. And who knows, maybe, maybe there will be a time in the future where we can talk about a proper rapid fat loss approach. Yep. And my man, Dr. Campbell at USF is actually studying this right now. Yeah. So that's very cool. Yeah. So based on the findings of the article, what did they, what did they suggest? Well, really what they're saying is it depends. Um, it can make sense on either end. And because of the fact that, yes, like you said, resistance training is important and they weren't having these clients resistance trained or these subjects resistance right. trained. Um, there's kind of a lot of stuff that we would like to see improved on the studies to really, really nail it in and say, okay, this is what we feel is the best. However, what it's showing is that there are definitely different approaches we can take for people who are in different positions in life. Um, because a lot of times what you'll do is you'll go to the doctor and they'll say, I want you to lose this weight, it's really important, and I want you to lose it by this date. And it could be 50, 60 pounds sometimes. Yeah. Maybe we need to take a more rapid approach to your weight and fat loss on that um, for your general health. And it makes sense, say yes, okay, let's absolutely do a more aggressive cutting protocol. And then really, preparing ourselves and understanding what comes after that for keeping the weight off. Because generally speaking, we're good at losing weight, it's keeping that weight off that's the challenge. Yeah, and, and so what we'll tend to do here with, with clients that we would potentially speak to is find out the situation that they're in and set up a plan based on that. And that's what you should do for yourself. You should be looking at yourself as an individual, yes. not comparing yourself to everybody else. And I will say this, the leaner you are, the slower you wanna lose body fat. The, yes. the higher your BMI, the higher your body fat level potentially, you might be able to lose weight effectively and do it quicker. So there are two kind of ends of the spectrum. You shouldn't apply a general rule to your approach. Yes, and so that's one thing you also really wanna be aware of. If you are a fitter individual who maybe maintains leaner, has more muscle mass, has been doing this for a while, a lot of the literature out there is not geared towards healthy, fit individuals. You have to look at the population. A lot of the weight loss studies are focused at people who are overweight and or obese, people who have more body fat to lose. So you may not always want to extrapolate that same data to your personal situation. As Paul said, you are an individual and that is how we need to treat you. Yeah, and likewise, the research showed that in Division One athletes, when they tried to have them lose weight, the group that lost it more than 1% per week, their performance in their individual sports suffered. But that's because they were already in such great shape. So does that mean that kind of really overweight people should only try to lose 1% of their weight per week? Probably not. But again, it just comes down to an approach that's sustainable for you and has long-term benefits. Absolutely. Remember, if you can't see yourself doing it in six months, it might not be the best thing ever. Can we do it for a short time? Yes. Yeah. If we can't see ourselves doing it in six months, we need to know what comes next and we need to have a plan of action to keep that weight off and to keep you being successful and healthy. Well, cue the science with Steve music that I don't really have yet, but maybe I'll make some up by the time I edit this video because that's it. We dropped the mic. Don't really die.